I forgot to check my mic settings before. <laughs> so I knew I was forgetting something, but it should be fine. Coming to you live from the rapidly diminishing sand dunes of Tuvalu. We are here today with Sparkling Tuna Cup number 20. We hit that big 2-0. It's no longer a teen tournament. We are in uh, the adult world. I am, of course, Hiroshiaku of the Zaku, and with me today is El Protector de la Prensa que Nunsa Deja Un Leo. Like, underscore VIP. How we doing, like? What's up, Yaku? Yes, welcome back, everyone, to another weekly edition of Sparkling Tuna Cup in Tuvalu, apparently. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Yo, there's a, for those who don't know, there are a lot of Easter eggs. <laughs> there are a lot of Easter eggs when it comes to things that Yaku does and things that Yaku says. So if you know, you know. <laughs> this is why you should sub. Exactly, exactly. And me, speaking of subbing, massive shout out to Babylings. Thank you so much for raiding with the party of 82. Right. Thank you so much. Less than three. Hope you enjoyed your stream. Right. And I hope everyone enjoys the tournament because we have just begun. Indeed we have, and we are starting with something spicy, as you can see a little bit in the chat here. We have a match with a little <laughs> bit of history between our players in the top right-hand corner of the map, spawning all the way in the top right-hand corner. We, of course, have our red Zerg player coming down all the way from the land of Brotan. He is, of course, going to be representing Platinum Heroes. He is Iba. And spawning in the bottom left hand corner of Inside and Out, we have the Australian Protoss player. Oh my god, representing the Cranky Ducklings, it is Starduck. Hashtag no bias. <laughs> Hashtag no bias. Yaku, I am so torn here because I have my son. My uh, my disowned son uh, <laughs> going up against the son that I want to adopt. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! Basically, what you're saying is this is a match that will determine whether or not Starduck stays on the team. <laughs> Exactly. Starduck has to fight for his right to continue being your son. I, I think what's crazy is that Starduck, uh, he's up against, I think for the first time maybe, and we'll have to look at like historic records here, but this may be the first time that Starduck is playing against someone younger than him. Well, that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, it may or may not be somebody who is younger than Starduck, but this is without a doubt the youngest player. I have to well in an official in an official match I should say yeah, yeah, yeah. the youngest player Starduck is ever going to be up against yeah exactly or, or is currently up against <laughs> or has yeah. ever been up against there we go. I, I forgot words there I was writing go. all day and I forgot my words yeah for those who don't know who Iba is he isn't just from Britain but he is the youngest GM player period he's the youngest player to ever achieve the rank of GM so yeah like there's even kind younger of a than time even <laughs> <laughs> even younger than time so that's crazy to think about crazy to believe again he is too young actually to participate in dreamhack in dreamhack you do have to be at least 16 years of age so iba cannot participate in those dreamhack events um or even i think the weekly ept tournaments actually i have to double check that um, uh, i think he can but he just doesn't earn any uh yeah what's it called EPT points. Yeah, he can't earn EPT points. He can't earn prize money either, I think, but he can participate. Um, but we have no such rule. You know, we're lawless here. We. <laughs> Hell yeah. Welcome to the Outback. <laughs> Welcome to the land down under, mate, where, you know, you're legal at a much younger age. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm really excited to see these two face off. Where we're going, we don't need no laws. We know. <laughs> exactly, mate, exactly. And you saw there was already a little bit of fire between our two players in the beginning of the game. Even before the game started, both players were just, you know, uh, just poking at each other a little bit, having a little bit of fun. And we'll see how things progress here. So far, we did see a Stargate opener from Sardar. The first Oracle comes out across the map. Nothing to kill here at the natural, though. So again, still hunting for some damage. I can sense the disappointment in Starduck when he rocked up to the natural and uh, saw nothing to be able to kill. These adepts from earlier on were injured. And of course, we're going to see oracles all the way across the map. There really isn't much uh, stopping 
those Zerglings are wreaking havoc. Yeah, exactly. There was the pylon being denied as well. We do have two more adepts that are going to be able to clean this up. So it looks like Stardock won't have to cancel his third base. Meanwhile, the Oracle cross map is still alive and it did get a kill oh. on a spore. Yeah, so already a little bit of a positive here for Stardock. So for the or other Oracle to meet oh. it across the map and should be able to get even more kills here. Yeah, exactly. Just as the moment as Ebo was repositioning his spore, two more drones went down. And now we have a second Oracle joining the fray. We have a third Oracle as well, as this is a triple Oracle opener. Stardock is, of course, going to be rocking that hero style. Is going to attempt to rock the hero style. But Eba is no stranger to that. Again, in the European meta, in the European ladder, this has been very, very popular recently. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Showtime. Actually, I don't know if Showtime was the one who <laughs> popularized this in that region. But, yeah, it's been... That hero gateway style has definitely been gaining a lot of momentum pretty much everywhere. I mean, he is the new face of Protoss. Yeah. R.I.P. Trap. R.I.P. Zest, mate. That's a... <laughs> R.I.P. Zest, yeah. Aye, aye, aye. Um, but yeah, yeah, we'll see how he's able to, ex able to execute it already. Two more drones going down here to a little bit of adept harass. Nicely done here by Stardock. Just kind of checking on things quickly. Um, checking here. Stardock was able to see the Roach Warren behind the mineral line. Wasn't able to see the Evo Chamber. So he's unaware of about the early upgrades coming out for Eva. Yeah, I think regardless, Stardock knows that he needs to prepare for a defense, but he may not be prepared for just how quick those links are going to come in and, you know, Blink Stalkers, they're not exactly what you want against uh, plus one links. Yeah, this is a scary moment right now because the links are going to be coming out and we have a lot of energy being used on Revelation. I mean, the creep is slowly receding, but we need these oracles to protect these stalkers from the links. Yeah, I'm looking at this one high health, high energy oracle with a lot of, uh, with barely any health on it right now. Light, oh. and it is barely able to survive. Oh boy. <laughs> I was looking at it too, like one or two more hits from a queen and that would have been it. But again, thankfully, Sadok was able to clear up a lot of that creep and force Eba back for the time being. Sadok's taking a fourth base behind this gateway explosion as well. He's working on his own upgrades, his own plus one. The scary thing about that is that he was dancing on creep without blink. So that, that, that was a very, very like scary moment for him where he could have gotten surrounded. Didn't happen though. So again, Sadok is gonna be playing with fire for a little bit longer until that upgrade finishes. And in the meantime, plus one melee has finished up for Eva. He's finished a round of Lings, but thankfully for Stardock, he's not really doing too much with them just yet. Oh, exactly. He is waiting to receive his opponent right now. I mean, Roaches are on the way. Glyle is on the way as well, so Roach speed. Um, Eva's going to have a hard time fighting off of Creep, so he's kind of waiting for the moment. He's looking to try and maybe catch those Stalkers as they did just reveal themselves on the edge of Creep there. But Sardok, like, so far, pretty good army movement. He has been able to avoid the Lings for now. Yeah, mostly sticking on the outskirts and the edges of creep, clearing up whatever he can, but not being too committed. I'm liking this a lot from Sardock, but this is a very awkward position. Ooh. It's really difficult to blink away from this, of course, because of uh, those rocks. Yeah, exactly. A couple of stalkers already going down. Not enough wings here to really chase this all the way off of creep. So Stardock's able to hold on for the time being. Meanwhile, he also is able to get confirmation of the fifth base on the way for Eba. I don't know how I feel about this. Uh, the pulse are being, being used to take down the hatchery. To be fair, the hatchery is going down, but that means that there won't be energy for, for, for stasis traps. Yeah, this is a massive risk coming out right now for Stardock. Even more so because uh, Eba, he's setting things up for a counterattack. But... Ooh. While all this is going on, a little bit of a pathing mistake from Eva Stardock, able to pounce and kill a couple of free queens. Yeah, three queens do go down. Slow Bailings are trying to waddle on in. The Oracles are doing what they can to try and support this army, but again, they just don't have a lot of energy and a lot of Stalkers are going down and Stardock is losing so much momentum. Yeah, I appreciate the target firing from Stardock Stalkers, but those Banelings uh, get killed right within range of the units. Anyway, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been a lot more dead probes than just two. That was real close. There are only two probes go down. Nice reaction time there by Sardok. He has to be careful. He has to make sure he replaces the shield battery that just went down as well. That area is looking a little bit more vulnerable. At the same time, we have a little bit of Zealot Harass here, just drawing away the attention of those links. And Sardok, it looks like he wants to try and force another cancel here of the fifth base. Yeah, but like you were saying, he's playing a little bit with fire. His own upgrades aren't finished just yet. Plus two is so close, but no cigar for... And he recognizes that he is going to retreat. 
for now. Yeah, he's forced all the way back for the time being. Meanwhile, another massive wing run by being set up on the left-hand side. The wall currently is a wall. There is a shield battery and there is overcharge. The starter, because natural should be safe for the time being. But what about the third base? That shield battery wasn't remade earlier. Yeah, while all of this is going on, Eba has noticed I'm doing so good at keeping Stardock back. I, I have the complete map control. I'm just going to take a hive because what's he going to do about it? Yeah, I want to see if Eba is going to go straight for ultras. That's something that I've seen on his stream recently. He's been trying to mess around, trying to go for that ultra style instead. Meanwhile, this is what I was worried about. The Bane run by his head towards that third base of Stardock. Oh, God. And then it's going to crash Ooh. into wall of stalkers. A couple of them do break through. And another two probes go down, but nothing else. Wow, that was very nice positioning there for Sonic. He basically made a wall of Stalkers. The, the Bailings just could not get through at all. Again, Stalkers are very resilient to Bailings, as we saw. Yeah. He just had a human shield, essentially. <laughs> they linked hands, or I guess Stalkers don't have hands, but... You know, they linked their legs together. <laughs> they did, they did. Oh my god, United we, United we stand, they did hold on. Meanwhile, when it comes to Eba, the Hive is done. It looks like he's not going for Ultras. He is going for actually Hydras, potentially even Lurkers. Oh my god. Yeah, looking at this, it seems like it's going to be a Lurker build eventually, but... I feel like this is something that uh, Eba only now has decided upon. Really good stasis ward, and I'm surprised Eba is still continuing to fight in that uh, position. Uh, this one, High Templar! It has the energy, but no storm yet! Uh, if it gets killed! Ah, uh, the Bailings are trying to break on through, and it looks like they will break on through in the end. The entire mirror line is gonna go down. Stardock was holding on for so long, he was forced to recall back at home, but it was a little bit too late, and 18 probes went down. 18 probes oh down over there, even more, uh, seven more probes over here. Stardock, I fear that he's now in an all-in position. I don't see a way for him to recover from this uh, financially. Yeah, I mean, if only Storm was done a couple of seconds sooner, that High Templar would have been able to make short work of the Ling Bane army. Now, as you were saying, Stardock is all-in. He has to go in with what he has. He does have two Storms available, and there's the first. Yeah, this is a majority Ling Bane army, so Storms are making short work of uh, most of Eba's forces. A couple of Hydras being thrown into the mix, but you still don't want uh, Hydras to get Storm. It is going to be just enough, though, for Eba to take game number one. G, G, well played. Eva, the new young kid on the block, is able to barely pull Stardock apart. I say barely because Stardock was doing, honestly, a, a really yeah. good job, a surprising good job at defending and protecting his mineral lines for the, for the longest time. Yeah, I mean, we saw it multiple times. He would pull away his probes very well to avoid the Bane links or even have just really good body blocking in SimCity to maintain his economy. I think the issue... Well, potentially an issue, I mean, is that he never got a fifth. Yeah, yeah, he never and, got a f hmm? Yeah, and it's difficult to kind of blame him in that position because, you know, towards the end of that game, Heba was kind of swarming everywhere with his lings and banes, but there was a little bit of an opportunity beforehand, right, where Stardock did have the map control and, you know, could have afforded to expand his economy a little. Yeah, yeah, like the fifth was nowhere in sight there for Stardock. At the same time, you could also argue that maybe in the early to mid game, Stardock was maybe taking some unfavorable fights as well, where he was losing a couple of Stalkers. And uh, we know that when if you're playing this style, it's all momentum based. You know, your Stalkers yeah. have to survive and build up over time, and then you can overwhelm your opponent. Oh if you're losing Stalkers early on, that, that will impact your the, the game later on. Yeah, it kind of... I want to say snowballed later on, but to be fair, you know, like you identified, Stardock was able to defend really well after that, yeah. but he never got the ball rolling again, mm -hmm. is kind of the issue. Yeah. And I'm just noticing this now, like, uh, I'll take a screenshot. Eva actually had like 750 APM. <laughs> mate, mate, he's the next Oreo, puppy. Oh my god. He is the next Oreo, yeah. Take care of your wrist, Eva. Take care of Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, God. Yeah, he's going to be a new son in more ways than one. <laughs> oh, boy. Shaking my head. Shaking my head. But, um, yeah, yeah. That was a really great showing there by Eba. We'll see if he can keep things going. As a reminder, this is a best of three series. Oh, so this could still go on a little bit further. We could go all the way to game numero tres. See. Sí. 
Potentially. We are on US Central. True. <laughs> We're just over not neither of them actually wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's not the most ideal, but it is all about fairness here on the Cranky Ducklings, and we are diving into game two. Indeed we are. It is gonna be here on Cosmic Sapphire. Neither ESL nor LE, it's... I feel weird having nothing to say after that pause. Anyway, in the top left-hand corner of the map, swinging all the way in the top left-hand corner, we have our Red Zerg player already winning one map, and as I'm being informed by chat, the youngest ever grand uh, player to reach the rank of GM at the age of 11 years and something days. He is representing Platinum Heroes from Britain, Iba. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Cosmic Sapphire, we have our Australian Protoss player himself representing, he is one of our very own, he's representing the Cranky Ducklings. It is Starduck. I made a mistake of trying to catch up with chat. Uh <laughs> Right, I, uh, that's there's a lot to catch up on over there. <laughs> there's a lot going on. The and yes, <laughs> the memes, the the beams are crossing. I I I. Oh god, but um, yeah, yeah. Again, it's really cool to see both these players here. It's really cool to see. We I haven't mentioned it, but I, I think I should bring it to everyone's attention. Starduck has been relatively inactive for the majority of this year, but over the past couple of weeks, like he has been playing more StarCraft. He has been competing more as well. It's it's really cool to see him. Uh, become more of a regular, not just in these tournaments, but like in team leagues, on the ladder as well. And that's a very important thing. I'm glad you brought it up. He hasn't been playing arcade. He has legitimately been laddering. He's been practicing yeah. a lot more. We've been talking to Starduck, and he said that you know the new maps coming in was actually a really big motivation for him to come back, and mm -hmm. he's enjoying the game a lot more now. Yeah, yeah. A part of that is also because it all coincided with um with part of KS2 going down for a while. Uh <laughs> So he was forced. You don't need to... that. Not that part. <laughs> he was forced what? to land. Wait, wait. Man, I was getting messages at like 4 a.m. He wasn't and, and forced so... to ladder. He could have played Dota, and he chose not to. I was getting messages at 4 a.m. Yaku was Sonic saying like, Papi, what do I do? I can't play Kerrigan Survival. survival. Ah! <laughs> just freaking out. It was like, should I just play Dota? And they're like, so... There's a very niche uh, part of StarCraft 2. Uh -huh. I don't know if you know, notice this, but uh, near the custom tag, oh, oh. there's a there's a tab called Versus. Oh, and under Versus, there's a tab called One v One. Oh, and if you click play yeah, with the race you desire, you can actually play matches against people. You you can do something that is colloquially known as the term laddering. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's, it's not the most, you know, it's not the most active part of StarCraft 2, but uh, uh -huh. it, it's passionate. There are people who do that. It's There are people who ladder. It's, it's insane. It's insane. Oh, and gosh. you know, when you ladder, it's not just for nothing. There's something called the uh, ELO score. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, is that you gain when you win matches and oh. you lose when you lose matches. Yeah. There you go. It's crazy. There's a there's a whole system surrounding it. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. So yeah, it's been really cool to see Sonic. I just... heard. Oh, god. I heard that if you get high enough on that, you get a rank that is called the Grandmaster. <laughs> and sometimes the Grandmasters, you know, they compete. In all, they compete in other uh, tournaments in the same format for money. No, sometimes you, you don't even have to be Grandmaster to compete in tournaments. You know, there, there's a there's a channel out there called the Cranky Ducklings that every single Friday yeah. they actually host tournaments for Diamond players and even Masters players to compete and and you know kind of earn their own prizes as well. That's the coolest thing about the ladder I found, Light, is that you don't have to be in that top 200 to have a rank there. Yeah, you know what's even cooler than the ladder? Distinguish yourself! Exclamation mark! Patreon in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> chat. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever played matches on the ladder? 
and wish that they were casted? Well, exclamation mark Patreon in the chat. Oh, wait, no, that's not a thing we do anymore. We do point redemption for that. Oh, my God. Anyway, the game is going on. There wasn't really too much going on here. It was a Stargate opener once again from Stardock. He is opening up with at least double Oracle here. Third Oracle is back at home, hopefully making sure that the third base is safe and sound. So a kind of a more conservative opener here from Stardock. He didn't go across the map until he had two Oracles instead of one. Yeah, and that gives him a lot more firepower, but does also give him a little bit more time to ready his defenses. He's got plenty of queens, he's got spores ready. Stardock able to make it out with two drone kills, but not too much after that. Yeah, meanwhile, Stardock was, he was able to keep his third base alive. He wasn't he didn't end up losing any workers or adepts or anything like that. So much stronger defense here from Starduck. Meanwhile, now he's gonna be active here across the map. He's going for the same style. We do have a forge and twilight counts on the way, but again, these are vanilla stalkers, and he can be prone to getting surrounded here if he's not too careful. And he isn't being very careful, is he, Light? <laughs> yeah. He is knee deep in a creep right now, but at least the oracles are here to provide a little bit of added protection, and honestly, there's not really much for Eva. Defend. Yeah, every single queen is going to be going down here. Next are going to be these roaches. What's important is that Eva is going for a very different composition. This time he did not go for any lings whatsoever. He is going pure roach, and it takes a little bit longer to pump those roaches out. Yeah, there's a massive window of opportunity for Stardock. He's already taken out all, just about every single one of the queens, but he has lost two oracles in the meantime, and he's still staying deep in creep right now. There is an opportunity for Stardock to get more drone kills and what have you, but... I'm not convinced Eva's gonna take that line down. Yeah, it looks like only three drones are gonna go down. The queen barely survives. Eba is gonna be able to hold on here. A little bit bittersweet if Stardock had his angle of attack, if he had hit the, the third base instead of the natural, he probably would have been able to get some drone kills on top of all those queens. Meanwhile, oh, he's sticking around and he's gonna get some overlords for his troubles. Yeah. So the risk is paying off a little bit right now for Stardock. You know, so he's not. Look? Walking home empty handed. This is actually a pretty huge supply yeah. block, yeah. <laughs> we really had three overlords on the. Ay, ay, ay. So again, Stardock finding a lot of damage here with this timing. He was able to recognize that roaches were being made instead of lings. And again, as we were saying, it does take longer to really pump all of them out. So yeah, really nice start here for Stardock behind it. He got his fourth up and running. He's fully saturated already on three bases. You don't need to prioritize your gases when you're going for this style either. Like, he is looking in for. And the gateway explosion is already here, and he is shoring up his defenses on uh, kind of the uh, kind of the outer bases as much as he needs to. From here on out, it is going to be nothing but stalkers for Starduck. Oh yeah, stalkers. Maybe a Robo if he wants one. But <laughs> Maybe a Robo. One. Maybe he'll remake the Oracles that he did end up losing. He only has a single Oracle right now, which is a little bit scary. He doesn't have that much map presence because of that. But because of that, there we go. He goes in and he does tag the army. It means he's going to have a harder time clearing up this creep. We saw in the last game, he was doing a really good job at just going for revelation after revelation, oh. forcing this creep back. Oh my god. Yeah, it's going to be an issue, but it shouldn't be for too much longer because that is a double robo on the way for Starduck. That means double observer production. Oh my god, he's going to have so much vision. <laughs> Dude, he's going to cover the map. He will see all. <laughs> and it'll only cost him like... 50 supply. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Meanwhile, when it comes to what Sadok is doing, we'll see if he goes for a double immortal production or if he throws down a bay behind this and he goes for disruptors. The downside is that you do need an additional tech structure and disruptors oh. do take a little bit longer to pump out, but both are going to be a great answer to a mass roach rav composition. Yeah, I was thinking that you know, uh, disruptors would kind of make sense as a defensive composition, but now that the Twilight Twilight? No, Templar Council! No, I always mix up those two Protoss buildings. Yeah, Templar Archives has been thrown down. Stardock is just leaving his foot on the gas. That's two Immortals on the way. He is, uh, he's looking to punish Eba a little bit. Exactly. This means that he's going to have a stronger army faster, or uh, an army faster, I should say. He does end up losing his Oracle, though, so that means, again, he's not going to have any revelations. He's not going to have any vision out on the map, which is a little bit scary, to be honest. But as you were kind of alluding to, yeah, there we go. He can now make those observers. <laughs> double observer. What I say? <laughs> Next, he's going to have double warp prisms, Let's... and then... 
he'll be unstoppable. <laughs> it's it's gonna get crazy. He can warp in anywhere. He can warp in anywhere. Meanwhile, Iba, he's trying to poke in front. He is maxed, but bearing in mind that this is not the most efficient army. Virch Ravager isn't supply efficient whatsoever. He's trying to trade. He's trying to find some damage. He does break through one gateway, but he's being caught out. At the same time, though, the army of Stardock is being pulled a little bit out of position. Ooh. A little bit of a premature blink, I would say, from Starduck. He does eat a couple of vials, but again, this is a much better army for Protoss than it is for Zerg. It is, but you know what? The High Templar exposed. One High Templar already going down. The other is almost focused down as well. Overcharges pop, but the Shield Battery immediately gets targeted by those vials. Yeah, Starduck very hesitant to turn them into Archons. He's waiting for Storm. And this, oh my lord, this one Ravager. Yeah. <laughs> it's the luckiest Ravager in the world. Oh my god, and here we go, the flanking Ravager, is he gonna get that? No. <laughs> Aww. He was the luckiest Ravager in the world. He was, he was. He got, got now sniped. he's the unluckiest. Got sniped in the end, quickly checking here. Storm is now done. We have a couple more Archons on the way, though. Sonic slowly banking up that NG for those Storms. His army is getting rounded out very nicely. But again, he doesn't have the most mobile army, and Eva is looking to pull him apart with these Barred Roaches. They yeah, already forced to cancel on that fifth base location, but Starduck, uh, yeah, he's looking to reciprocate. Yeah, the army is still quite solid here. He's throwing down more cannons, more shield batteries, making sure he doesn't have to turn around here any longer. He wants to focus on this frontal assault, and against pure roaches, can Eva hold on? I'm definitely a little doubtful here, but so is Eva, which is why he is, uh, Transitioning a little bit, he's starting to work on that Infest account. Working on that Hive. The Hydroden is ready. It seems like he actually doesn't want to go with Locust this time. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, he's got options available to him, and Infestors will definitely help out. Energy based units are always what you want to get. There we go. Lurker then is thrown down, so it looks like he wants to eventually go into Lurkers, which is great for Ground Toss. But if Sada catches on to this, he can start transitioning into Sky Toss. Yeah, pretty big if, though. Yeah, so far, Eba has been doing a pretty good job of denying Starduck one map control and two uh, vision and scouting information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the other important thing right now is that Eba may have a lot of tech, uh, but he can't use any of it maxed out like this. Like he is going to have to throw away part of his army, but he has to be careful because if he throws away too much too quickly, Starduck is just going to roll over him. So we have to have a very calculated and very careful use of these roaches for the coming in the coming moments. Yeah, getting to this stage of CVP with Rogue Travager, you're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place, or should I say an immortal and a stalker army. Yeah. Because there's really no easy way to, you know, trade Rogue Ravagers without the Protoss player starting to gather momentum. Oof. Ouch. Exactly, that was a kill, not a cancel there. Stardock sniping another base, rotating towards the north. Eba was double expanding, and he is getting a base on running, but at the same time, a Warpism gets into the natural. And the Zealots are here to completely destabilize the army of Eba. All these roaches are moving back. Starduck is moving in. And I'm not convinced that force is enough to uh, repel this Protoss army light, even with the Infestors. Oh, we'll see that because in a couple of seconds, Neuro Parasite is about to finish up here. So the Infestors may not be ideal, but he can take control of maybe the High Templar, maybe even those Archons. Yeah, we'll see how well Sardex is able to zone this Ooh. out. Immortal gets neuraled, and it does such a good job of sniping a high energy, high Templar, even more on the way. Another Templar. Templar? Well, all the Templar are dead, but I was gonna, <laughs> meant to say another Immortal gets zero parasited. Oh my god, exactly. The Immortals have turned code here in favor of Eva. At the same time, the War Prism was cleaned up. Sardex, his entire army crumbled. And we don't have a transition into Sky Toss. We have the Stargate from earlier, but that is it. And Lurkers are now on the way. Yeah, we were a little bit worried for Eva since he was maxed out for a very long time on Road Travagers. But, of course, you have to keep in mind that while he was maxed out, he was building a massive bank that he is now cashing out. He's remaxed way quicker than Stardust could ever hope to. Yeah, exactly. And now Lurkers are going to be coming into the mix. They have been now scouted, so Sark is fully aware that Lurkers change everything. But at the same time, oh my god, the feedbacks! They were real. Just about every single High Templar 
is dead supply at this point for Starduck. Oh, exactly. The neural feedbacks is insane. Eva or Dark is here. <laughs> he is in, uh, in Sparking Tuna Cup for the first time. Uh, Starduck is trying to pull him apart. Again, no right. mining here at the first base. There is that at least. And oh, one of the lurkers goes down. Yeah, that's definitely a start here for Starduck. Archon did get new parasited, but the Immortals, Immortals, uh, Infestors are starting to get targeted down once again. Eba remaxing mostly with Roaches and Ravagers, and while he has a massive supply lead, they're not a very efficient army composition. Sorry, yeah. can still defend against this. But you know what? How much longer? Because Hydras are finally coming out. Eight Lurkers are being morphed in. We do have a bit of a Zealot run by it on the right-hand side as well. Eba, he just can't catch a break. He just can't get this left-hand base up and running. Starlick is doing a great job at buying time, but what's he doing with that time? That's what I'm most uh, worried about. Oh. Yeah. Whoa. Massive concave coming in here from Eba. Whoa. The entire arc Starduck routes. And this may have just been the definitive move for him. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't blame him. In that one moment, these infestors were incredibly vulnerable. The lurkers as well. So he took the bait, and it was bait because Eva was waiting for him with the rest of his army. The reinforcements, the macker of Eva was just a little bit too good there. And Sardak, he was just punished brutally for it. Now he's on the back foot. And now I don't know if he has enough to hold on to his bases. Nice cannons he's got there. Eva is yeah, probably thinking. Oh. Oop. A little bit of a pause here. Yeah, hopefully nothing too serious. I mean, again, the economies for both players are relatively, I say relatively similar. Base counts are similar. Look at the drone count. Like, you know, that's at least something going Starduck's way. But uh, what about that army, puppy? Yeah, I mean, the worker advantage is a little bit of a double-edged sword here for Starduck. I don't think he has a terrible defensive setup. He definitely has a lot of static defense. So maybe if he's able to weather another st swarm, that upgrade or that worker count is going to pay off big time for him. He's going to be able to get more of an army, but that's a pretty big if. Starduck overextending a little bit every now and then. He really needs to fight within range of cannons and shield batteries. Yeah, exactly. And there we go. We have a couple more neurals as well. The Archons and Immortals now in favor of Eva. And there's just there's just not enough on the ground to break on through here for Sardak. He's being forced all the way back. The Lurkers, they just keep on pushing forward. And it looks like, again, Sardak barely cleans up part of the army, but he just, he just doesn't have enough. Yeah, he's doing a good job of taking out, you know, some of the high-value targets, but he's losing his own units. At the same time, we're down to 10 army supply versus 85. Eba, he can remax on anything he wants. There's nothing that Starduck can uh, produce to stop him. Yeah, it was a close defense, and Starduck almost held on, but almost is not going to be good enough. Roaches come in, Lings, Hydras, a little bit of everything, and Eba does break the fifth base, and with the fifth base, that's going to be uh, kind of all there is left. We do have still have more Immortals on the way. Um, you have a bunch yeah, of idle probes. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's taking the gold base, but unfortunately, that borrowed roach will see everything. Maybe there's a way for Starduck to hold on. I mean, he's gonna have better mining, right? <laughs> he's gonna have better <laughs> mining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. But GG gets caught in the end. Eva oh, is able to take game number two and the series. I guess that means we're not going to be seeing that Kerrigan survival match. <laughs> uh, thankfully. GG, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well played. Congratulations there to Eba, but that was a pretty clutch series. Like, sure, Eba may have won 2 0, but there were definitely moments there in both games. Uh, even here in game mm -hmm. two, I was really surprised considering that Sardak was at a ping disadvantage. Yeah, in fact, I feel like Starduck actually did a little bit better in game number two. You know, maybe he did. He did need that game number one to warm up a little bit. But mm -hmm. yeah, very two very close uh, games that we had here. Eba, however, able to edge things out. He is proving that uh, the future is now. The future is now. Time moves okay. forward. Starduck. No longer the young blood on the scene. Now there is another generation coming out. Uh, is, do they have That's an official thing about? Yeah, <laughs> good. Hmm? 
that weird. there are people young. It, it <laughs> first it, it was weird when I re when I found out there were people younger than me. Mm -hmm. Then it was weird when I found out that there were people younger than Alex. Now I'm finding out there are people younger than Starduck. Yeah, it's like there are people younger than you, and now there are people younger than the people that younger than you. It's, <laughs> it's ah, ah, ah. Wait, it's, what? <laughs> How's that happening? Uh, feels bad, man. Feels bad. And good at the same time, you know. GG, again, GG, well played. Master shout to Starduck. I think Starduck, he, he did put on a really good showing. Um, I was very impressed with how Starduck was performing. Oh, boy. But, um, Iba, you know, looking looking pretty strong here. Get, getting into, into, into round three.